Okay, nine three. Section nine three. Okay, you are going to figure out what are the next two numbers. Figure out what the next two numbers are. Oh, sorry. Think about what the next two numbers are. Josh, give me the next number. Um, 96. 96 and then... 192. Okay, and then 192, yes. Okay, uh, Brady, what are we doing to get to the next number? Uh, you're adding and then... Uh, you're adding by uh, the term... Uh, Before it? Yeah. Or you're multiplying uh, by two. Yes, you're multiplying by two. So you're doubling, basically. Um, okay, so the last number we still, again, we call that a n because it's the last number. And what do we call the term before that? A n minus 1. Okay, so we can see that the rule is we're going to multiply by 2 every time. And then so we say r is equal to 2. We use r for geometric sequence. Geometric means we're multiplying or dividing to get to the next number. Um, okay, all right. We are going to um, make sure everybody has a partner. Okay, Andrew, can you be uh, Josh's partner today? And then Alana, you're gonna be like a group with the people in, in the, your, behind you. Okay, so the people on the right hand side of the group or the partners, raise your hand. Okay, the people on the right, that's you, okay. Uh, you are going to explain to your partner what is recursive formula. Go. What is a recursive formula? People on the right, ex uh, explain recursive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you still with me? Oh. You're looking at definition. Okay. People on the right. So let's try Sebastian. What did you say? What was recursive? Um, how about an explanation instead of a formula? No? Yes? Okay, yeah. It has to do with the number before. So recursive formula is based on the number before. Okay, so based on previous term. All right. Now the left-hand side people, it's your time to shine. You are going to explain to the, your partner what does explicit formula mean? People on the left, explain to your partner. What does explicit formula mean? What does it mean? Okay, let's try Trey. What does explicit formula mean? I have no idea. Yeah, no idea. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, really stuck. Um, Evan, you're not sure? How about Sally? No? Samantha? Not based on the A1 term, we, uh, but we do need A1. Uh, Mark. Uh, 
Ellis, you're next. <laughs> if Mark can get it, you're next. <laughs> Mark, no? Shaking his head. Ellis, what is explicit formula? Nobody knows. Okay, anyone knows what, what does explicit formula mean? <laughs> okay. Uh, please go back and listen to the lesson again. Okay, explicit formula means based on n. We can just find any number if we know the n term or the n number. Like we want to find a10, we can find a10. We want a20, we can find a20. We don't have to care about what the previous number is. Okay, so we are going to learn geometric sequence today. So we're going to talk about the recursive formula and the explicit formula. Recursive formula, it is based on the previous number. First part, a n equals previous number, a n minus 1, times r. Second part, we need a1. So whatever a1 is. Can you take out your little cheat sheet and then write that in there? So we're going to fill out some formula every day so you don't have to keep going back to your notes. because you had the test. I was like, oh. All right, so that is the recursive formula for geometric sequence. Okay, next, explicit formula. Um, you guys are pretty <coughs> smart, I think. Um, I'm going to show you how to derive the explicit formula. That way, you're not always just memorizing formula. I, uh, in reality, I really hate memorizing formulas if I don't know why, because I cannot remember it very well. But, but if I can see a pattern and why it happens that way, then it, I can memorize it better. So I'm going to show you how. Okay, so, um, um, okay, let's look at these uh, numbers here. Okay, number three, so three is the first number, right? So that is A1. Six is the second number, so that's A2, and then A3 and A4, right? Okay, so let me ask you, how do you get from um, A1 to A2? Multiply. Multiply by 2, right? So A2 is the same as A1 times 2, uh, sorry, A1 times 2. How do you get from A1 to A3? Times four. times 4 or times 2 times 2. Basically, 2 R's. Are you guys with me? Okay, to get to A3, it's A1 times 2 times 2. Okay, how do you get to A4? Okay, times 2, times 2, times 2. Let's think about this a little bit. To get to A2, how many 2's did I multiply? 1. Okay, so people in the back, I need you to participate. The more you say something, even if it's wrong, at least you're thinking. If you're just kind of passively waiting for things to come, you'll not remember pretty much for the homework. You're going to look at your notes and then forget the next day. But if you participate, the, you'll remember better. Okay, um, A3. When you want to get to A3, how many twos do you multiply? Two. When you get to A4, how many twos do you multiply? Three. What is the pattern? It's one less than the term number, right? Okay, let's write it this way. Instead of two, I'm going to say it's R. R, R, and then three R's here. Okay, so what I can say is that this is A1 times R to the first. Second one, A1 times, R times R is the same as saying what? R squared. R squared. And then this one here, A1 times three R's is the same as 
r cubed. And we said that it's always one less than the n number, right? So if I have a n, that is the same as a1 times r to the what? n minus 1. So you have came up with the formula yourself. This is the explicit formula for geometric sequence. Just think about it. Between a1 and the number you want, the number of r's you multiply is always one less than the n because that's how many gaps there are. Does that make sense? Because if you have three numbers, there are only two gaps. If you have four numbers, there's only three gaps. It's always one less gap than the actual number. Yes? OK. All right, so that is the formula. So you basically came up with it yourself. Um, so if you forget the formula um, on the test day, you know how to get back at it. OK, make sure the n minus 1 part is an exponent, not a um, multiplication. All right, let's practice. So we're going to go to the next page. Oh, make sure you write this down on your cheat sheet as well. So now you're filling out all of the geometric, recursive, and explicit. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, you and your partner, let's finish this one. How do you get to the next number? That tells you if it's arithmetic or geometric and fill out the rest. All right, let's do this. Let's start from the back. Um, Allison, first one, is this arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. Arithmetic, very good. So what number are you adding every time you get to the next number? Three, very good. Okay, uh, Sebastian, what is the recursive formula? Times R? But this is arithmetic, so plus D. When it's arithmetic, we say you use D and not uh, R. So in this case, D is three. Um, we also need A1, so what is A1? Three, three very good, okay. Uh, Samantha, what is the explicit formula? Good. And for those of you who did simplify it, it's 3n. Okay, Andy, do you have the 15th term, a15? 45. Good. Oh, wait, you didn't say 45? <laughs> okay, 45 is the right answer. Okay, let me give you another one. Um, I didn't, I, the next one is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna give you an easier one. No, I, you like the hard one? No, no, I'm just um, Okay, two, four, eight, 16, 32, dot, dot, dot. Okay, I want the recursive formula, the explicit formula, and A15 as well. A15 is going to be pretty big. Uh, let's not do A15 then. Let's do A10, a little smaller. Okay, let's go over the answers with you because uh, you haven't tried this yet. Okay, recursive. A n equals A m minus 1 times 2. Okay, you got to give me A1. A1 is 2. Explicit formula. A n is equal to A1. A1 is 2 times ratio, which is also 2, to the n minus 1. If you leave it like that, you're good. You can go one more step. They have, uh, so again, we're always going to remember what the previous chapters are talking about. We cannot forget the previous chapters. We have two things of the same base. What can we do with the exponents? Add. Add them together. So 2 and 2 have the same base. That 2 is to the first power. So this is the same as 2 to the 1 plus n minus 1. So that is 2 to the n. Okay, you do need that later for now. If you leave it like this, it's okay. But later on, you need to leave it like that.
Okay, if you forgot how the exponent rules, please review chapter six. Um, A10. A10 is A, uh, basically using the formula, it depends on which one you choose to do. Um, if you use this one here, it's going to be 2 to the first times 2 to the 10 minus 1. So that is 2 plus 2 times 2 to the ninth, which is just 2 to the 10th. If you use this formula, it's just 2 to the 10th because n is 10. Okay, let's try another one. 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 10th, 3 to the 15th, 3 to the 20. Talk to your partner. Is this arithmetic or geometric? <laughs> arithmetic or geometric? Do you add or do you multiply to get to the next number? Okay, raise your hand if you think it's arithmetic. What number do you add every time? Five. So if you add five, you're gonna get here? No, it's not. You add five to the exponent, right? Yeah, so that's not quite adding. So what do the rest of you think then? Geometric, you're like, it's one or the other, right? Okay, it is geometric. Then you have to ask yourself, what number are you multiplying every time to get to the next number? Three to the fifth, yes. Now, for most of us, we can't really figure that out. So I'm gonna show you a very simple way. Remember, to get to the next number, you multiply by r, right? So three to the fifth times r is gonna be three to the 10th. How do I find r? Divide, so r is equal to three to the 10th divided by three to the fifth, right? Okay, when you have same base and you're dividing, what do you do with the exponents? Subtract. Subtract. So this is three to the fifth. So R is three to the fifth. Again, please make sure you review previous chapters. So R is three to the fifth. Now you can go ahead and write your formulas. Okay, recursive, explicit, and that's it. Yeah, recursive and explicit. Go ahead and write that. Recursive formula is a n equals a m minus one times r. This time r is three to the fifth. First number is three to the fifth. Okay, make sure you have both. Explicit formula a n equals first number, which is three to the fifth, times the ratio, which is three to the fifth, to the m minus one. To the m minus one, make sure you put the parentheses around it. You're just multiplying the two things together. Okay, let's try simplifying this. Three to the fifth times three to the, we're going to distribute, so five and minus five. What do we do when two bases are the same? What do we do with the exponents? Add them. Okay, three to the five plus five and minus five. So that is three to the five n. Okay, let's now solve some problems. Let's do the trickier one first, and then we'll do the simpler one. Okay, let's look at this one in the middle. What is the missing number of this geometric sequence? The key is geometric. Okay, what do you have to multiply to get to the next number? What do you have to multiply to get to the next number? Mm, we don't know. But we do multiply something, right? So to get from three to 12, how many r's do you have to multiply? Two, very good. Times r times r. So three times r times r is equal to 12. Can we simplify this equation a little bit better? What can we write instead of r times r? R squared? r squared. Okay, let's solve for r. r squared is equal to 4. <coughs> what is r? Mm. Plus minus. Plus minus. There is a such, such thing called a negative number. Okay, plus minus 2. Plus minus 2. That means 
if I multiply by 2, so if r is 2, if I multiply by 2, what's my next number? 6. And then if I multiply by 2, 12. I'm good, right? That works. What if I multiply by negative 2? What do I get uh, if I take 3 times negative 2? Negative 6. If I multiply by negative 2? 12. Okay? So in this question, there are two answers. You have to tell me both answers. Does that make sense? Because R could be positive or negative, and I would still get to the same place. Okay, let's look at the previous one. Now this one will be very easy for you. Go ahead and figure out the missing numbers. All right, 2 times R times R times R. So 2 times R cubed is negative 54. So R cubed is negative 27. So what is R? Negative 3. Negative 3. Not positive 3. When it's a cube, there is no plus minus. Okay, if you forget about that, please also review that uh, chapter that has the cube stuff. Okay, so the next number is multiply by negative 3, so that's negative 6, and then multiply by negative 3, which is 18. And that is the only solution. There is no plus minus in this case. All right, let's try another one. This one. Um, don't use your calculator. Um, because what happens is uh, you're going to get a bunch of decimals and then your next number is going to keep being like a bunch of decimals and then you're going to be like, oh, it doesn't make any sense. Ra the ratio is a nice fraction. R is going to be a nice fraction. Okay? Let me know when you are done. Okay, so 972 R to the fourth is going to equal 12. So R to the fourth is 12 over 972. I'm always going to give you a nice ratio, so you don't want to turn it into a um, fraction, uh, a decimal. Oh. 1 over 81. So then R is equal to 1 third, not 1 third plus minus. Okay. Every even power has plus minus. Okay. 